We see in today's gospel reason, uh, we, we see in today's gospel reading rather, the, the reason as to why, uh, or one of the reasons as to why the Jewish leaders want to kill our Lord. They, they want to, to get rid of him. So they have a hard time accepting the fact that he is God. And our Lord makes it very clear. And, you know, we kind of misunderstand. So when, the, when, when our Lord says, I am the Son of God, they understood that he must be of the same nature, therefore he must be God. Now, he alludes to a passage of scripture where God says, you know, as human beings, you, you are gods. And what that means is not that we are a god, but rather the sense of having authority when we think of the earth. Mankind has authority over all the earth, over all the animals. We have power, we have ability to control the world, to, to do so many things. So we are kind of like these individuals who are in positions of authority. So our Lord is using the scripture passages to appeal to them to say, okay, if you don't believe I am God, if you don't believe I am the Son of God, think of me in this sense at least, that I am a son of God according to this sense. But recognize the works, recognize that the power of God must be present within me. So the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. So he's appealing to them. He's just trying to, to you know, make them see the light. He's trying to get them to, to reason soundly. But of course they refuse. And part of the reason they refuse is this is not the only reason why they want to kill him. This is not the only reason why they are rejecting him. Now, it's interesting we had in today's first reading uh, from the book of Jeremiah, how they are all out to get Jeremiah. What had Jeremiah done? What had he done wrong? What had our Lord done wrong? Nothing. But you see, they were out to get Jeremiah because he was critical of the people because he was saying, you haven't been faithful to God. You need to turn back to God. You need to repent of your sins. And this is the same message of our Lord. And in fact, our Lord, you know, he criticizes the Jewish leaders because they failed to practice true charity. And they also, um, you know, the, the Jewish leaders also question our Lord when, when he does miracles on the Sabbath. And our Lord tries to explain to them that, you know, he's only doing what his father is doing. And, and you know, who, who wouldn't pull out their, their ox if it fell into a, a well or a pit on the Sabbath day? So he's trying to reason with them to make them realize that they're wrong. But you see, he's, he's asserting his authority over theirs. And of course, he has every right to do that. So by means of his authority, he's showing what the Sabbath day is really all about. But you see, they don't like this. They believe that they are the greatest authority. They believe they have studied. Who's this Jesus guy? He's just the son of a carpenter. He's a carpenter. He didn't study. What does he know? So in other words, they're clinging to their authority. They're clinging to their pride. They're not willing to humble themselves and to acknowledge that they were wrong. Plus, our Lord is, is critical of them. And they just can't stand that. And for him to say that he is God, well, it's not just the difficulty of God conceptualizing that a human being could be both human and God. That's not the, the only difficulty there. You see, the real difficulty for them is, okay, he's doing all these miracles. The power of God must be present within him. But if he's truly God, then this is God who's criticizing us, and we just can't have that. Oh, no. We are the, we are the educated ones. We are the holy ones. We are the Pharisees. We know what's right. We are the ones who are blessed by God. So they, they just can't accept that fact. So they, they want to get rid of Jesus. And they realize the only way to get rid of him is to kill him. So they plot to kill him. And you see, there's a very important lesson here for all of us. And that important lesson here is that in the same way that they tried to get rid of Jesus, for these reasons that I mentioned, and maybe more, they want or people want to destroy the church for the same reason. The church exerts itself, herself, as an authority in the world, not just regarding the dogmas of our faith, but especially in regards to morality. And the world does not like that. They want to silence the church. And over the centuries of the existence of the church, they have tried repeatedly to do so. And they've come to the realization that they cannot destroy the church by force. The more they tried to kill the Christians, the more the Christians grew. And so they realized that the only way to really destroy the church, to silence the church, 
is to infiltrate the church. And there's evidence that this has been done. Some of you may be familiar with Taylor Marshall. He has a lot of YouTube videos. He's a former Protestant pastor. He's a very good traditional Catholic. And he wrote a book called Infiltration, and he talks about some of the evidence for the church being infiltrated by Freemasons, by communists, by homosexuals. And he doesn't, I don't think he mentions this, but also Satanists. And if we think about the, the, um, the vision of Pope Leo XIII, you know, he had this vision of, of Christ giving Satan 75 to 100 years of greater dominion, greater uh, influence in the world. And according to some accounts, Pope Leo XIII also saw the demons of hell descending upon the church and wrecking havoc within the church. And right after this vision, he locks himself in his private study and composes the prayer to St. Michael and makes it mandatory for that prayer to be recited after every low mass. In other words, he foresaw the corruption that would enter into the church at every level of the church. And this is to be expected. You know, even if we didn't have these, these private revelations, you know, even um, uh, Our Lady of La Salette, you know, she, she said that, that Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. But even if we didn't have these private revelations, even in the scripture when Christ says, you know, unless the time of my coming had been shortened, no one would be saved. In other words, the corruption will enter into the church and affect everyone in the church. And this is very relevant, relevant to our times because, you know, there's this synod on synodality and, you know, these German bishops and the things they're pushing for. And it seems like it's not just going to be German bishops, bishops but it's going to be kind of a universal thing that is kind of promoted and accepted, you know, such as, you know, ordination of women, Maybe initially just to the diaconate or to have greater roles in influencing the church, um, married clergy, uh, blessing of same-sex marriages, and, you know, the list just goes on and on and on. And it's kind of like throwing morality out the window. So it's clear that this is happening, and it's very important for the faithful to be aware of this, because if they are not, many of the faithful leave the church. Well, if the church is just like the rest of the world, what's the point of coming to church? This will be the attitude of many people. If the church does not proclaim the truth, then the truth is not to be had. It's kind of like believe whatever you want. So we need to be aware of this, and we need to proclaim the truth as Christ proclaimed the truth. But yes, we also need to manifest works. So Christ appeals to his works, and in particular to his miracles. And yes, we've got all kinds of miracles in the Catholic Church, more so than in any other religion or any other Christian denomination. But it's not just the miracles, but his love, his love, which is perfectly manifested in his crucifixion. And you recall how he said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. In other words, we need to practice self-giving, self-sacrificing love to the people around us. And it's only when they when, when they recognize that love, that they will listen to us and hopefully change from their sinful and erroneous ways.